Hey guys, Kevin here. This is kind of a different kind of restoration therapy video. You might be able to hear it in my voice. A little bit weak. I don't have a lot of strength. Whether I posted it or not, I had to have a second back surgery, so that's no fun. But during the process, my lovely wife was able to find me a project to work on to keep my mind occupied. So here I have a Macintosh Color Classic, and she got it for free from a couple that was moving away and I, you know, they, I guess they found it in their attic and it was broken and they couldn't get it to fire on. So I was ecstatic, gave me something to focus on during my recovery, you know, and I got my belt on here to keep my back straight. And before I had made a restoration therapy video of me working on an Xbox, I don't know if I posted it or not, of before I had my surgery. So that was something for me to focus on to try to keep my mind off of the before. Now I'm working on the after. So this is gonna be a fun project for me, assuming everything goes well. The initial thing, when I got it, it didn't power on. I was able to actually fix that. Really wasn't a big deal. The way that I fixed that was I just cleaned the capacitors on the logic board. That was a pretty simple solution. I didn't record myself doing that repair, but that repair, cause I, I didn't actually intend for this to be a big thing. Cause I thought that was it. You, know, you got these little tabs back here. There's actually a, there's actually a few YouTube videos, I think on this, the logic board slides out. And then here's the logic board. The uh, silver things are the capacitors, you know, toothbrush and rubbing alcohol pretty much takes care of that problem. And I actually took the EEPROM chips off very gently to make sure that I didn't bend anything and I clean those and I, I let it dry overnight put it in and after I did that Came back on. I had an, uh, another issue on my hands. The hard drive died. So actually the Macintosh worked for about a day, but I played around with it for a while and it decided to die. The hard drive, which is on this side, you should be hearing clicking sounds, which is the sound, which is, you know, would be the sound of the read right head on the hard disk moving around, but listen to what you hear. You kind of hear it spinning, and then listen. I don't know if the phone is picking that up, but you hear it wind up, and then you hear it wind back down. I believe that's a sign that that hard disk just had it. And, you know, this thing probably sat in the attic for a very long time, and the people that we got this from were moving, and they decided to try it out, and it didn't power on, so who knows? This thing probably hasn't been fired up in like, and really used in like 25 years. So that hard drive probably has been sitting in the same position for a very long time, and then me spending an entire day using it, um, I probably freaked that out a little bit. So right now there is no hard drive in it. I actually was able to pull the hard drive out. This bottom half, which contains the motherboard, which is actually very easily, you can pull it out very easily. It was designed for that so that uh, users could easily install things like RAM but in uh, Apple's infinite wisdom, they put the hard drive way the f back in there. So it's, it's not accessible. So the only way to get to the hard drive is to actually take this piece off. But I'm scared out of my damn mind to work on this because these things can be quite dangerous to work on. These CRTs can hold electricity that have enough electricity in them to stop your heart. So that's why I'm really scared to do this without the proper knowledge, without the proper tools. So what I'm going to make a video on since I didn't really think that this was gonna be a harrowing tale. How do I replace a fucking hard drive in this thing? Well, actually, yeah, there are some some people that have videos on how to replace a hard drive in a Macintosh computer. Sorry, it's hot with the lights. And yeah, the Color Classic in particular is not only a somewhat rare Macintosh, but it's a difficult one to work with. So what I wanna do is make a video on how I can work with it. Now, one of the things that I had a problem with was according to the official documentation, you have to f 
with the CRT in order to get the hard drive out. And I didn't want to do that because I'm not an expert in that. And that scares the ever living sh out of me. Before I tried anything else, I actually tried to enlist the help of friends and family, and I actually called computer shops, and nobody would, no, nobody helped me. Like I said, I've been reaching out to computer shops in the area. Nobody wants to touch this thing. There seem to be some places in California that will, but I don't want to ship this thing back and forth in the mail because this is old plastic, and old plastic is fragile and old fragile plastic has a tendency to crack and I would really love to have this in working condition because this is a piece of history but you know me I appreciate computing history and it's important to me until I came across the blog post which I'm going to talk about in a second this is the introduction and now we're going to get into the meat and bones of how I got the hard drive out now now once you get the hard drive out you're still not done because you can't just take the system disks and boot them on here. And it's, it's just not that simple. So I couldn't really find any YouTube videos that were useful and that were helpful. I wanted to make something for you, the regular guy, the regular girl, the Apple Macintosh vintage enthusiast that just wants to do this and doesn't want to die doing it and wants to have a little bit of fun in the process and doesn't want to have to try to kill yourself to do it. So. Let's get started. That was a horrible intro. After a lot of useless posts and blogs, I finally came across one. Linked in the description, of course. I actually really identified with this blog, even though I may not have been the intended target audience, because this writer wasn't interested in messing with the CRT either. This post also points out what I mentioned from the service source documents that says messing with the CRT is the proper way to access the hard drive. Just like me, this writer didn't really want to do that. A little further down is a picture of the author's hard drive seated in the standard position. When I swing over to mine, it looks pretty much exactly the same. So just seeing that got me really excited. So that really got me to continue reading, even though it correctly pointed out that the hard drive was not exactly within reach. It's like right there, but you just can't quite get it. Continuing to read a little bit, the writer unplugs the data and the power cable, mentioning having issues unplugging the power, but I didn't have any issues. Mine came out with no problem. Then the Rosetta Stone came into view. Apparently, a friend of his mentioned a release tab that can be lifted, and when lifted, it can free the hard drive from its cradle, and then once it's free, it can be pulled towards you. This blew my f***ing mind. This mounting tab is documented in the service source documentation, which is intended to free the drive after the bottom portion of the computer has been freed from the CRT portion. Once the drive has been freed, you can pull it towards you with a pair of pliers just by holding on to the tab. And it was unbelievably simple to do. I could hardly believe it. I didn't record myself extracting the original drive, but here is a reenactment of the process with the new drive that I put in. I first start off by disconnecting the data cable by hand. Then with a pair of pliers, very gently wiggle the power cable out. I have no interest in breaking this, so I was very careful. Then I tuck both cables underneath where the logic board sits so that they're both out of the way. This is the tab that we are targeting. With the cables removed, it's actually very easy to see. This is what is holding the hard drive firmly in place. Again, with pliers, I grab a hold of this tab and gently lift up and pull it towards me at the same time. I tried not to apply too much force because I really did not want to break the tab, but obviously you're going to have to apply a little bit of force. Once it's free, you can pull the drive towards you. I would need both of my hands to pull the drive completely out because you kind of need to push up on the RF shield to get the drive out and I need my other hand to hold the camera to demonstrate this but I'm sure you can figure that out just be careful okay don't accidentally touch any of the CRT stuff of course this is not even half the battle now you have to get a new hard drive and an operating system installed reading further there was a mention of a system enabler that is needed to get system 7.1 in installer to work so I had to prepare a custom boot floppy with a minimal 7.1 installation plus the enabler 401. 
Um, okay. So what does that mean? Again, I must not be the intended target audience here. I am new to this. That doesn't mean anything to me. A little further down, the writer shows a working Macintosh color classic, so I assume there is some knowledge out there that I just need to learn. Yeah, this article helped me out an awful lot. It helped me get my hard drive out without messing with the CRT, which was absolutely amazing. I even went so far as to ask a question about how to make these discs. Looks like I was the only person to post a comment, at least at the time of this recording. Believe it or not, the writer of this article actually reached back out to me, but it was after I had already figured everything out. I was very grateful that I actually got a response back and very thankful that this article actually got me on the right track for me to get this uh, color classic back up and running. But since I didn't get a response back immediately, I decided to go on an expedition to figure out how to get this thing solved on my own. I mostly found posts that were just not helpful. People saying that I could install a higher version of the operating system that didn't have floppy disk images and either didn't didn't explain or loosely explain how to get the data over, especially to a machine with an unformatted hard drive. I, uh, I eventually found this post that provided a hint. So it looks like I needed to get the system enabler 401 and get them on the disk images for disk tools and the first installer disk. But how the f do I do that? I have never done this before, so I'll have to figure this out on my own. Well, I've never turned down a challenge before. I may not always do things the right way, but I always get the job done. Somehow. Since I don't already have a vintage Macintosh working to modify the floppy disk images with, I figured the next best thing was emulation. For better or for worse, that was the path that I traveled. All right, folks, let's go. Let's get it done. Without really knowing what to do, I figured the best place to start would be to get the System 7.1 operating system disk. So I ran out to winworldpc.com and got the Apple Mac OS 7.1 3.5 inch 1.44 megabyte English M68K download. After selecting a mirror, the 7-zip archive started coming my way. In case you haven't noticed, I'm working on a Mac, but you should be able to do everything I'm doing here running on a PC or Linux with one. If you have a PC, just run out and get 7-Zip if you don't already have it. If you're like me and using a Mac and you need a 7-Zip alternative, one that works pretty good is Kika. I'm just going to install it real quick on this machine. And since it was downloaded from the internet, I will have to give it permission to access my Mac and to access my hard drive. You may or may not have to do this depending on how your system is set up. After extracting the archive, I'm going to rename a few files just to make it a little bit easier to work with. For example, removing file names with spaces in them. And also deleting some junk files. Let's also go ahead and create an install folder to house the installation disk and give them their own little home to live in. In order to proceed, you're going to need a floppy disk drive, and here you can see a cheap USB drive that I got off eBay. I'll leave a link in the description on where you can get a similar one. Also, make sure that you have some floppy disks handy, and I'll insert one and write an image and demonstrate the issue we're trying to solve here. I'll open a terminal session and make sure that it can see the disk drive. And to make things nice and clean, I'll create a folder in my root called disks to hold the disk images. That will also make my commands a tad shorter. Next, I'll copy my system 7.1 disk images to my slash disks location and rename it to something shorter and also making sure that I remove the spaces. Not necessary, but again, just makes it easier for the command line. Okay, let's use the dd command to write the disk tools image to the floppy disk. If you're using Windows, I believe that you can use WinImage or Magic ISO or a number of other programs, or you can fire up a Linux virtual machine, connect your USB floppy to it and run these exact commands. It may take up to 10 minutes to write the disk images, so you may wanna have something else to keep yourself occupied while this is being done. After our disk tools disk is ready, we will insert it into the color classic and boot it up.
keep in mind the hard drive has already been removed. The system will boot from the floppy disk anyway, even if there was a hard drive in there. So we see this stupid error about how System 7.1 does not work on this model. Which again, is stupid because before the hard drive died, this is what was running on this computer. Alright, so let's go find this System Enabler 401 that is needed for the Color Classic. It downloads as a bin self-extracting file, but I don't want to extract it on my Mac because it may screw something up. Next, I'm going to download HFV Explorer, which is a program that will allow me to mount HFV mounted images and transfer data to and from them. There is a Mac version called Fuge HFS, but it sucks. Most of the time it crashes and doesn't work. So I recommend that if you're using a Mac, just get Wine and use the Windows version HFV Explorer. It works just fine. Let's extract it, delete the source zip file, and run it just to make sure that it launches correctly. Okay, looks good to me. Now we'll head over to get some pre-prepared blank disk image files. So I'll download this zip file. Extract it, delete the zip file after extraction, and inside the extracted folder, I will extract the blank disk image files that are compressed as zip files. I'm going to make a disk image to put System Enabler on, so I'm going to copy this 400k disk image, and I'm going to stick it in the directory that we had our disk images in, so slash disks, and I'll just paste it in here, and I'm going to rename it to system enable dot disk with the file extension of HFV. And now I'm going to open up HFV Explorer.exe. I can navigate to the slash disks folder and I can see this HFV file, but what I really want to do is I want to navigate to my downloads and I want to locate my system enabler self-extracting binary. On the upper left, I want to go to edit and copy. And then I want to mount that HFV file by going to open volume and then navigating to my Z, which is my system mount, go to my disks and actually open up that disk image that I created. Then I'm going to click on the right pane, go to edit, and then paste. Click OK to all. And what I've done is I've created a disk image. So this self-extracting file can then be used in an emulator or written to a disk. The next step is to download a Mac emulator so that I can actually start manipulating these disk images. One that isn't super functional but works is Mini VMac. So I'm gonna go to this website here and I'm going to go to the Macintosh OS X and download the X64 version of it. Once it downloads, I'm gonna to go to the downloads folder in Finder, double click to extract it, and then delete the compressed file. Then I'm gonna make a directory so that I can keep all of the files associated with this emulator together. So when I launch it, you're gonna see that it complains that it can't find the ROM image. So naturally, that's what we gotta go get next. So I'm gonna to go to this website and download the vmac.rom file that the emulator was complaining about. Then again, run out to Finder, and then I'm gonna drag this into my directory that I have the emulator in and relaunch the emulator. And as we can see, the emulator is now actually open, but it's complaining that it doesn't have a disk to read. So let's see if we can fix that problem. So let's open up the terminal, and I'm gonna pay this command in here which is going to create a 40 megabyte blank volume that I can use in the emulator to install an operating system on all right that was pretty simple so now if I open up the emulator again the way that this emulator works is actually pretty simple in order to mount disk images all I have to do is drag them into the emulator so what I'm gonna do is run into the Mac OS install directory here is I'm gonna drag disk tools over so this actually will launch a mini version of the operating system. So you can see we have an OS here. Let me go back to my mini VMAC directory and I'll drag this disk over into the emulator and it's gonna say, hey, you want to initialize this? And I'm gonna say, uh, yeah. And we'll click erase and I'll name this Macintosh HD to make it obvious that this is gonna be where the operating system is installed. And now I have a 40 megabyte hard drive. So I'll go ahead and close the emulator and reopen it. So the next thing that I want to do is install a operating system on here. So this is actually kind of like a dry run of installing the OS, which is actually kind of cool. So we're actually practicing installing the OS before we actually do it. So I'm going to drag the first install disk over. Then I'm going to drag over the Mac HD over. 
And we're gonna go through the process of actually installing System 7.1 onto this disc volume, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna move back over into this directory that contains all the disc images because we're gonna have to keep swapping back and forth. So here we go. We're installing disc one. Now I'm also speeding this up so you don't have to deal with uh, the time that it takes, but it actually doesn't take that long in the emulator. So now that it, now it wants disc two, install disc two. Now it wants tidbits, so we drag that over. Now it wants printing, so we drag that over. Now it wants fonts, so we drag that over. Now don't expect it to be this quick when you install it on the Color Classic. Now it wants the, other, the original install disc. We stick that in there. And here I could have just easily hit quit, but I hit continue because I'm a dummy. And we'll just hit quit and restart. Now when this machine boots up, it doesn't actually automatically mount the hard disk, so we're gonna have to drag the hard disk over. But once it's over, we actually have System 7.1 installed on this, or actually I should say running, on this virtual machine. So, not bad. Okay, like I mentioned before, we have to get that system enabler on those disks. So let's run out to where we have our disk images. And the first thing that we want to do is actually drag this disk over. Now, I change the file extension. I take the HFV file extension off, but technically you don't need to do that. So I drag over that disk image that I created that has the self-extracting system enabler 401 on it. So we're just going to keep this handy because we're going to be using this. The next thing I'm going to do is in my Mac System 7 install directory, I'm actually going to make a copy. So, so check this out and follow me here. So I'm going to make a disk tools one, and then I'm going to copy and paste, and I'm going to have a disk tools two. And there's a reason why I'm doing this. So just, just again, sit tight for a second and you'll see. So we're going to have two disk tools disks. So the first thing I'm going to do is drag over the disk tools one image into the emulator. And here is disk tools. So what we have to do is get that system enabler into this system folder. So let's try that. So let's go to the self extracting binary and then we'll go to the desktop and select the system tools disk and then select the, sy the system folder and then I want to extract. Now you're going to see it says that it's full. The disk is full. So, uh oh, there's my first problem. There's not enough space on the disk. So I'm gonna have to say, all right, well, I gotta delete something off this disk in order to get the system enabler on it. So I just said, all right, well, fine. Let's just delete the, um, the disk first aid and make some space on this disk. So then we'll go to e the empty trash and that should give us enough space on the disk. I'll just kind of rearrange the icons so that it's not an eyesore. Now let's try the self extractor again. We'll go back to the desktop. We'll select the disk tools system folder and extract and that looks like it works we go to the system folder scroll down and we see system enabler 401 okay so we have that in there just like that forum post said we needed to do so let's also change the label on the disk to say disk tools one so we can differentiate the two and drag it to the trash so that we are ejecting the disk. Okay, so we have one disk tools disk. Now we'll drag over the disk tools two image. Now, since this also has some disk tools stuff on it, we will delete the stuff that we didn't delete from the first disk. So we'll delete this one and then we'll delete the hard drive setup and we'll leave first aid on there. And we'll also change the name, the uh, the label of the disk from Disk Tools to Disk Tools Two. At least this is how I did it. Other people will probably have better solutions. Again, this is my first time doing this. So we'll empty the trash to make sure that we have the room on the disk. And then I'm going to use the self extractor so that if I ever wanted to boot this Disk Tools Two disk, I could. So then I'll select the Disk Tools Two disk system folder extract and then that should be good so we go to the system folder scroll down and there is system enabler 401 okay cool so close and close and then drag to the trash can to eject the disk the next one that the form post told me to do was take the first install disk and put system enabler on the root 
So, okay, that's what I was told to do. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. So we'll go to the system enabler self-extracting binary and we'll select the desktop and then we'll select the install disk and then we'll extract and there it is okay so i believe that i've done what the forum post told me that i had to do in order to get this thing rolling so what do i got to do next i don't know let's shut down the virtual machine and let's start writing these disks into physical floppies so let's stick a floppy disk in there and let's write the system tools disk on there the first one and let's see if we can actually get this to boot without getting that error message again this can take five six seven almost ten minutes this takes a while here it is okay i remember last time we did this exact same thing and we got that stupid error message let's see what happens now hmm i wonder yep there's the old hard drive sitting there wishing that it still worked Okay, it's thinking. All right, welcome to Macintosh. Thank you. I'll be happy if you boot. Oh, ooh, ooh. We didn't get this far before. And okay, that's fine. That just means that the battery inside is dead. The clock battery is dead, which is fine. You can buy those on eBay still. They're standard batteries and we have a desktop. So it looks like at the very least, putting the system enabler on the system tools disk gets you to the system tools operating system disk so that we can actually do something. <laughs> okay. So, so far so good. I feel, I, I'm starting to feel really happy. So let's open up the system tools disk. And just proof that this is the disk that I made in the emulator. So if I open this up and we scroll down and there it is, the system enabler 401 that I stuck on there. Okay. First step. Good. Let's keep going. All right. Now we got to install the hard drive. So here we go. I hope everybody's still with me and still fired up and excited. So here we go. Here's the back. We're going to pull these tabs and, and here's the hard drive that we're going to replace it with a 700 megabyte hard drive, which is massive for the time. So we'll pull the logic board out and I'm going to pull the, these screws out with a Torx screwdriver. Now I only show these two because I already pulled the other two out. Now we're going to slide the back of it off. Again, be very careful. Then we're going to pull this sled off of the back using the exact same size Torx screw. So there's going to be four of these. We obviously have these two up top and these two on the bottom. Yeah, you like how I sped that up? It's awesome. All right, here's the dead hard drive. Sorry, pal. All right, now here is your replacement. 700 megabit bytes of raw power. And the sled will just fit right on. So no replacement sled. All right, so we got our four screws back on. Let's slide this closer to me. All right. Okay. Let's just make sure that we try to practice safety here and don't touch anything. So I'm going to move some of these wires out of the way because there are a bunch of wires in here. Well, like one wire. There's this, this uh, red and black wire. So there is a sled that you have to push this down. So you just get it in its groove and you just kind of push and ah, ooh, just goes right in. I just push it all the way down. And that's basically all I had to do. And now let's go ahead and push our power cable in using our, our tweezers, tweezers, our pliers. Once that's in, we can put our SCSI data cable in. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and put the top back on, put my logic board back in. And here you're going to see all four of the screws put back on because again, in the beginning, I only took two of them off because two of them were already off. Now the machine is put back together. Well, okay, I got to put this little fella back on. Now we can put the ADB in, the power in, 
and we can flip this puppy back up so the hard drive is installed. All right, let's see if we can get this operating installed on this machine. This is the final goal. So here we go. All right, let's uh, get the power turned on and let's turn this machine on. Well, first off, let's take the disk tools disk in and then we'll turn on the Macintosh Color Classic. And yay, happy disk, happy computer. So remember now, we have our hard drive installed. And again, we have a dead battery, no problem. I ordered a new one, so pretty soon that won't be a problem anymore. So we'll open up Disk Tools, Disk 1 that I made. And yeah, it was a lot slower than it was in the emulator now, wasn't it? <laughs> now, isn't it? <laughs> this thing comes standard with four megabytes of RAM. <laughs> it's like 16 megahertz or something. Okay, so it found the hard drive, which is awesome. Okay, so one of my first worries is out of the way, so we'll initialize it. And it says, hey, you sure you want to do this, pal? And I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah. So since this is a 700 megabyte hard drive on a machine from a long time ago, it took a long time to do it. I'm going to give it a name of Macintosh HD. Uh, now I did cut through that so you didn't have to wait, but that did take quite a while to initialize this hard drive. And there we go. Boom. Go ahead and quit. So as far as I know, this hard drive is ready to rock. So if I open it up, I can see that I have a, for the time, humongous hard drive. I mean, this thing came with like a 40 or 80, I think it was a 40 megabyte hard drive. So let's shut this thing down, or I guess I should say let's reboot this sucker, and the disk is gonna spit itself out automatically, and I'll go ahead and stick the install one disk in. As I was instructed to do by the internet, and let's see what happens. Oh no! I got an error! Okay, so it says hold down the shift key to launch it without extension, so let's try that. Alright, so let's see if this happens. This, this, this does anything. Come on, fingers crossed. Okay, another error. Alright. So at this point, I'm starting to get a little bit frustrated. I don't know what to do. I'm scared. I want to crawl up into a ball and cry because I've gone this far. I've gotten so much work done. I spent so much time on trying to get this thing restored. The only thing I could really think to do is I know that there's a mini operating system on the system tools disk. So what if I were to boot the machine and then copy the contents of the system tools disk to the root of the hard drive and then just boot from the hard drive. So let's try that. So let's see, we'll open up the Macintosh HD. This way I could at least get something functional. So we'll copy the system tools disk over to the Macintosh HD. Cause I know that this boots, right? It's taking a while, but it's doing it. It's copying. La 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 la. You saw that assist system enabler went over. Because it obviously enables the system to do something. All right, so we'll close that of disk tools. And then we'll reboot the system. Now the hard drive should, the computer should just think that the hard drive is the system tools disk. So let's see what happens. This is my Hail Mary. Okay, it looks like it worked. Okay, so now I'll stick the installer disk in. And my hope is that if I run the installer, it should just work. So let's see. Okay, it's starting. Okay. And all right, so it's beginning to start to install. I'll customize it. Now I should have probably just went cause I just kind of went a little hog wild. So here we go with system there, Apple printers. I, I'm probably not gonna use any of this stuff but I just got a little bit too excited once I saw the installer pop up. So I just started selecting a bunch of stuff. I'm holding down the shift key I believe and then selecting things. Just scrolling through, just wondering what kind of fantastical things were available for me to add 
since I had so much hard drive space, I figured I could stick whatever I want on here. So here we go. Then I can click install. And um, at this point, I'm still scared. But removing outdated files, so I'm thinking, okay, it's probably deleting what I put on there. And now it's, it looks like it's installing, so my fingers were still crossed and basically all of my toes. But there we go. It's installing. Okay, and now it wants disk two, so let's feed it disk two. All right, now we'll feed it disk three. Now this was probably not a conventional way to install it. Definitely a bit of a hack. And again, from somebody who is not an expert at restoring vintage Macs, this is the very first one that I've ever done. So please excuse me if I embarrass myself in front of the entire world. But for many, many, many days, days because I'm very impatient, it took me a while to figure out how to get this thing going. So this is just how I did it. All right, so we're installing the last install disk. Okay, now it wants the original install disk. Okay, now it wants to restart. So here is basically, this is it, this is it. Now do we have the final operating system? And it looks like we do. So we did it. All that hard work. Finally paid off. Ah. <sighs> I'm just going to go ahead and delete a couple of the files that are on here from the system tools disk because I probably don't need those. Maybe I do sometime, but that's what the system tools disk is for. And then we'll just kind of clean this up a little bit. But I have a relatively speaking large amount of hard drive space to work around with if I do want to try to put some software on here. But oh, I'm so excited that I got this thing back to life. Came to my house dead, now it's ready to rock. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you had fun. Take care, bye bye.